Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm going to stray from my source material a little bit. I'm not going to tell you any war stories. I'm not going to uh, break down the top five of whatever in whatever source of media, and I'm not going to be talking about the CWL or Call of Duty. Instead, I'm going to talk about the NFL Draft, because my favorite team, the Philadelphia Eagles, have recently made a bit of a splashy move, trading away several players and the 13th overall pick in the draft for Miami Dolphins' number 8 pick in the draft. And a move like that, moving up five spots from the middle of the draft to the top 10 of the draft usually doesn't happen unless you have somebody specific in mind that you want to take. And so the question has been circling on Reddit and in different forms of media on the radio and everything else, who is it that the Eagles have targeting? And nobody is getting more speculation than running back Ezekiel Elliott. And I gotta say that I hate that idea. Not that, not because I have anything against Ezekiel Elliott. He might be a great player, but simply because he's a running back, and I hate the idea of drafting a running back in the first round. So I thought I'd give my philosophy and tell you guys exactly why drafting a running back in the first round is a terrible idea. And a lot of people have their own idea of how to operate an NFL draft. A lot of people think that the... Uh, best way to draft is drafting a position that your team needs, regardless of whether the person at that position is the best person available, which is obviously a terrible way to draft. A lot of other people more popularly believe that the draft the best player available is the best, but I'm here to tell you that that also is incorrect, because what if the best player available is a kicker? What if the best player available is a punter? Do you want your team to draft a punter in the first round? Obviously not. The true, honest, correct way to operate a draft is drafting the best value available. And while running backs 15 years ago and before that held great value in the NFL, I mean, back in the 70s, you had uh, Bob Greasy won a Super Bowl and only threw the ball eight times the entire game. But slowly but surely, we've gone through eras with Dan Marino and John Elway and two eras with Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, and now we're into this era where like, a running back really is not that important, and a running back has been devalued in the NFL draft for three reasons. And reason number one is that they have extremely short careers when compared to other players. So let's just say, for example, that whatever player you take in the draft is going to be good. They're going to be a Pro Bowl level player, and they're not going to have their career cut short due to injury or just re- early retirement or anything like that. They're going to be the average star player. A running back holds the least amount of value, and the reason is because running back only give you about eight years of productivity. Meanwhile, if you look at the other positions, if you draft an offensive lineman and it works out, you have that position on the offensive line sealed up for between 15 and 20 years. Same thing with quarterbacks. Wide receivers and defensive backs usually give you between 10 and 12 years before they start falling off the cliff. But running backs fall so hard so fast. Now, there are a couple exceptions to the rules. The Eagles' own Darren Sproles is 32 years old and still going very strong. Of course, one of the main reasons is because he's not a feature back and doesn't touch the ball that often. And then, of course, there's Adrian Peterson, but you can't really compare anybody to Adrian Peterson. He ran for 2,000 yards after tearing his ACL the season before. He's just an absolute freak. But the average running back, or even the average star running back, really hits a wall at age 30 and ultimately gives you about eight years of productivity. And so if you're looking at the Eagles position, right now the Eagles have a ton of question marks on their team. You don't know if you have the quarterback of the future. You don't know if any of these young wide receivers are going to step up and really be stars. You don't know what you're going to do on your offensive line to replace guard or have a backup replacement for Peters. You don't know if your patchwork defensive backfield is going to actually be as good as it is on paper or if it's all just a flash in the pan free agency stuff. You know, the only true star you have on the team is Fletcher Cox, a defensive tackle. 
adding a running back into that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because by the time your team is really built and you have all the necessary pieces in place to consistently compete for the playoffs every year, you're basically looking at four or five years of good play from the running back you draft this year. And so you're basically wasting half of the productive years of his career while you are trying to dredge your way through the rebuilding process, winning eight games a year. And reason number two kind of ties into that as well, and that is that running backs are so dependent on the players around them. Every every position in the NFL is dependent on players around them. You know, the defensive ends need the defensive backs to cover their receiver long enough for them to get to their quarterback. The defensive backs need the defensive ends to get to the quarterback, meaning that they don't have to cover their receivers as long. And of course, the quarterbacks need receivers to catch the ball. They need offensive linemen to block for them, everything else. But no one is more dependent on the team around them than the running back. To make this point, just look at DeMarco Murray. DeMarco Murray was an absolute stud in Dallas, where they have one of the best offensive lines in football, but he was a complete schmuck in Philadelphia, where they had two backup guards at the starting positions and a Pro Bowl center who couldn't figure out how to play center for some reason. But, you know, the situation you're in is really important for a running back, and there, you know, you could take a better running back. I'm not going to deny or argue that Ezekiel Elliott isn't better than Ryan Matthews because I don't know Ezekiel Elliott that well. And Ryan Matthews hasn't really done anything at the NFL level. But I would argue that Ezekiel Elliott behind the current offensive line is not better than Ryan Matthews behind an offensive line with a first round pick added to it. It really makes no sense to add a running back to a bad team. What you need to do is get a good team, then add the running back to it, kind of like how Seattle did when they built a good team and then added Marshawn Lynch, as opposed to what the Bills did, how they drafted Marshawn Lynch into a bad team. And the third reason that running back has been devalued in the draft is the fact that the talent drop from the top of the draft to like the third or fourth round really isn't that steep. You know, for every Adrian Peterson or Todd Gurley or even Doug Martin that you get in the first round, you're seeing two or three guys like LaShawn McCoy, second round pick, DeMarco Murray, third round pick, Jamal Charles, third round pick, Arian Foster, undrafted. For every person that people spend high money on, on a running back or a high draft pick on a running back, there are just as many people coming out in the third or fourth round that are just as good as those running backs. And I haven't done the research on this, but I wouldn't be surprised to find out that any time a running back was taken high in the draft, like Reggie Bush or Trent Richardson or Ad- not Henry Peterson because he's the greatest of all time, but you know, most of these high first round pick running backs, if you look back over their careers, there's probably somebody who is taken in the second or third round that is just as good, if not better than them. So it really doesn't make sense to spend a whole lot of money on or sorry a whole a whole lot of resources like a high draft pick on a running back when every single year in free agency you're getting big time running backs being available in the draft in the third or fourth round you're seeing guys come out that weren't expected to do much but are simply because the talent drop isn't very steep so just to do a quick recap The reason that running back value has dropped in the NFL draft to the point that I think a first-round pick is a waste is, one, short careers. You're not getting very much bang for your buck. Number two, they're so reliant on the team around them that if you're a bad enough team to have a high draft pick, then you're too bad of a team to add a running back. And number three, they're a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. They're in free agency, they're available via trade, and they're they're late in the draft. You can find them anywhere. And despite all of these reasons why taking a running back in the first round is a bad idea, there is one very, very, very major reason that the Eagles probably will. I will not be surprised at all. I won't be happy. I'll be very upset. But I won't be surprised to hear that the Eagles took Ezekiel Elliott in the first round of this draft if he is on the board when they pick. And the reason is because coaches have such short careers these days. 
Every single coach, from the moment they sign their contract, is immediately on the hot seat. I mean, Chip Kelly has the highest winning percentage of any Eagles coach ever, and he was fired after three years. You look at Oakland, there was a stretch where of like five years where they had five different coaches. Today's NFL is not the same NFL that allowed the same coach to build a team around Bob Greasy in the 70s and then build a team around Dan Marino in the 80s. That 20-year coaching span doesn't happen now. So if you're Doug Peterson and you're a no-name coordinator from a from a, you know, average Kansas City team and you're coming to Philadelphia with no accolades, with no name recognition, and no high expectations, really, and you just saw them fire a coach that they bent over backwards and, like, flew to the moon to hire in the first place after one bad season, you do not have any job security. You are not feeling very confident or comfortable in your situation. And so you want to do anything you can to make your team better right now. You're not thinking about 10 years in the future when you have to find another running back as opposed to having this player still on the team and still fairly young. You're not thinking about what's going to happen in the future because you may not have that future. In fact, you probably won't. Whatever, Whoever he drafts this year, odds are this player will still be in their rookie contract when he's fired because that's how it works. And the fact is that running back is the one position that there's really not a learning curve. Like, you, when you come into the league, you are who you are at running back. You know, a wide receiver, the biggest jump in production from a wide receiver is from year one to year two. A rookie receiver is not who he's going to be for his career. Uh, same with, like, quarterback. The best way to do quarterback is draft a guy, let him sit for a year, and then start him in year two. That's not the most typical way to do it nowadays, but it's the best way to do it. But running back is somebody that you get in there and you get top production. You get 100% of who he's going to be from day one. And so because of that, adding Ezekiel Elliott to the roster may make your team a 9-7 and seven team instead of a 7-9 and nine team, which means that you have more job security even though you're still probably not making the playoffs. So despite the fact that it in my opinion, you will hurt the team long term. We have a coach who's not thinking about long term because there is no long term for an NFL head coach. That's that's just the way the league is. So thanks for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and goodbye.